the primus stove um, is useful because the legs can swing out into such a point that the chimney can then fit around the housing without hitting the legs. This is the Edelrid Hexon stove. I have separate videos on that. But this has a different way of using this modified chimney where instead of having the legs spread out to where they're not in the way, they will fold closely enough around the housing that essentially the chimney just simply goes around the entire thing. At that point, this is started with the legs in a um, retracted or a collapsed fashion. And once the stove is going, the legs are easy to open up using something like the Leatherman tool or something to just spread this apart while it's running. And at that point then you have the stove set up for cooking and it's stable. So this is good for using the modified chimney as well, but with a different way of modifying the legs. This is showing the startup technique using this modified chimney and the Edelred Hexon stove. This is still a prototype, but it's getting pretty close to what would be considered a final version. Although this is made from a piece of scrap titanium foil, this cutout here, which was for a different project, has served an interesting uh, um, piece of information because it provides for an opening for the holes on the side of the stoves. So I think that even in a final version, there would be some kind of a cutout that would allow for air uh, to move through into the, into the stove. This particular piece that I made specifically for the Primus MFS EX stove doesn't fit this stove as it is because it's too short. So I made a modification with a small piece of, again, leftover foil. I put a little fold in the point here so that it will interlock with this little uh, fold over piece here. And then I have some little tabs that I have set up that will engage this portion here, which also is folded over titanium. So when these are put together, it lengthens the circumference uh, of the available option and now it will fit around the um, it'll fit around the stove and this cutout will clear the gas line. These little interlocking tabs then will just simply lock in place to hold it in place and there it is. It produces a very compact uh, chimney with again airflow that can come in from the bottom. The important point is that you must have enough titanium that covers the upper portion of the housing. It also serves as a kind of a mini windscreen. Uh, now to actually start the stove, I put in one uh, cc. Now notice that's one cc. That's less than a fourth of a teaspoon of denatured alcohol. I just put this on the pad that's there. And then I light it and I put a cover on it to retain the heat. And I just let it sit like that while I go about attaching the fuel bottle and other things. It takes about a minute to a minute and a half for things to heat up significantly to where it's okay to start the stove. So I will go ahead and connect this. This bottle has about 50 milliliters of Coleman fuel in it and um, about 10 pumps of air. For these chimney startups, I typically use a relatively small amount of air in the bottle for Coleman type fuel, white gas, that kind of thing. Kerosene is different. It requires a higher pressure in the bottle.
It's still burning a little. I can feel the heat coming from it. Now one of the videos that I have on the chimney shows a graph of how the temperature is uh, relatively maintained even after the alcohol burns out, which is one of the pluses of having this, this kind of uh, chimney device. In the past, I have tried to start these with the cover on, but I find that that is, especially for these tighter chimneys, this doesn't work quite so well. So I now remove the lid, start the uh, stove, and then usually put the lid back on, at least to some extent. So let's see if we can get this thing going. Let me remove the lid and open this up. All right, now it's, it's burning. I'm gonna put the lid back on just for a little bit here to ensure that we have adequate heating of the uh, generator. I leave that on for, I don't know, about 15 seconds or so. Depends on how things are going as far as the nature of the uh, burning characteristics. And then I go ahead and take the lid off. And typically, if there's no evidence of any kind of flare-up or anything, I consider the stove then to be adequately heated up. And then remove this. And for this particular stove, as I mentioned before, you just simply open up the legs. And you now have a functioning stove. You can now add more air. That's a total of 50 pumps, including what I started with. And that's wide open. So that's as much as I'm going to get on this 0.28 millimeter jet. But it's adequate for demonstrating this. And the 2.8 the two jet is useful also for kerosene. So I routinely keep the 2.8 jet on this particular stove and actually also on my Primus stoves because I typically use kerosene more than I do white gas. The white gas will use, uh, can burn either using, I mean, the 2.8 jet will work with either white gas or kerosene, so I just keep the 2.8 jet all the time.